This is construction number 10, and this one is one of my uh, more favorite constructions because we're going to be taking these triangles and we're going to circumscribe a circle about the triangle. So what we're going to do is draw a circle who hit, that hits each endpoint of these triangles. And the way we do that is going back to uh, things that we talked about a long time ago is when you have a triangle, if you draw or if you have the perpendicular bisectors of each side of your triangle, those perpendicular bisectors are concurrent. They're going to meet at a specific point either inside or outside of your triangle, and then that point is going to be equidistant from all your endpoints. So with that said, we're going to draw the perpendicular bisectors of at least two of our sides. We could do all three, but if they're all going to be concurrent, if they're going to intersect at the same point, you only need two. You don't need to do the third. So using the construction process to draw the perpendicular bisectors, there's our first one. Now I'm going to do this side over here. Doesn't matter again which side you use. We're going to do the perpendicular bisector of this side. Now the big thing here is just to make sure that you're keeping track of which arcs go with which uh, side. Being careful not to change the length. This right here is going to be the perpendicular bisector of the side over on the left. So that right there is a perpendicular bisector as well. And this point right here should be the point of concurrency of our perpendicular bisector. So if I did it correctly, all three of our perpendicular bisectors should intersect at that point. So just to double check, I'm going to do this third side. And again, this side isn't necessary, but move into the other point, draw my arcs. Those arcs intersect, and it looks like I did a fairly decent job, and these, all three of these perpendicular bisectors are indeed going to intersect at this one given point. So this point of intersection, or this point of concurrency for all three of our perpendicular bisectors should be equidistant from all of the endpoints of our, circ of our uh, triangle. So if I measure the distance from here to one of my points, it should be the same for all of them. So that's like a radius, so being careful not to change the length on my compass. As you can tell, I've hit all three sides. I'm not wanting to really spin the paper around. My hand's probably in the way. But as you can see that this acute triangle, you're able to draw a circle that hits each one of these endpoints on your triangle. Pretty cool. So I'm going to do another one really quick over here on the other side. This is an obtuse triangle. It doesn't matter if it's obtuse. doesn't matter if it's right. Uh, doesn't matter if it's acute. All you need are two of the perpendicular bisectors. So going right ahead here, I'll do one side first. There's one. Do the other one. I'll do this long side here. Make sure again that you're going more than halfway because we need them to intersect. So here we go. Looks like we've got our point of intersection here. Hopefully it's not too far off or off at all. So using that point of intersection, notice how with an obtuse triangle, that point of intersection is outside of our triangles, but still is equidistant from all three vertices of our triangle. And if I continue it on, it's actually going to go off the page, it looks like, a little bit. But as you can tell, that triangle is going to be inscribed within this circle over here, meaning all three of its vertices are points on the circle. So perpendicular bisectors bisect at least two of the sides, and then that point is going to be equidistant from all three vertices. Equidistant, just like a radius, you can draw a circle right around your triangle.